Hi, I'm Chef Dan, private chef from the Jersey Shore. We specialize in in-home dining experiences and also traveling around the U.S. with clients. My passion for cooking comes from working in the kitchen at a young age with both my grandmothers. After working in fine dining for years, I decided eight years ago to go off my own as a private chef. It's been the best decision I've ever made. Today I'll be working with some local ingredients to create some simple dishes that you can use to impress your guests at home this summer. We're going to be using some local yellowfin tuna to make a nice tuna ceviche dish, as well as halibut with pistachio and arugula sauce and crispy rice. All right guys, today we're gonna do some ceviche. We're gonna use tuna today. Um, tuna is a great, versatile fish that's around or in the summertime, wintertime, um, always available and, uh, and great for uh, ceviche. So we have our ingredients here. We have our lime, our nice slab of tuna, some avocado, some red onion, um, cilantro, a little micro cilantro for on top, garnish. We have some fried scallions, Thai chilies, and we did some, uh, some green onions for you guys as well too. We're going to start by slicing the tuna against the grain, so we get nice even cuts. You want to make sure all of them are all the same size, so they cook evenly. Now we're going to slice the same way into cubes. The key with ceviche is you want to do everything in even cuts. Same with the onions. Um, we're going to use a little bit of Thai chili to give it a little heat. I like a little heat on mine. Now you can use any type of tuna for this. And this is a fast dish. It only takes around a half hour to make. Um, most of it is uh, just putting it together and then pop it in the fridge and let the lime juice do the work. All right, now we're gonna start slicing and dicing. Red onions are very important. Um, it gives you a nice crunch on it. Um, really, uh, I feel like it's not a ceviche unless you're using some red onion. I'm um, gonna slice it pretty thin and remembering to make all the slices the same size. So I like to slice them like that in long ways. I'm gonna give it one more slice down the middle. Break it up into our ceviche mix right here. I like to kick it up a little bit. We're gonna use a little bit of Thai chilies. Um, one or two will be fine. We're gonna slice them thin like this. Go a little more heat today. We'll do two. All right. Next, we're gonna get our lime juice ready. Um, this is going to be our marinade for the fish. Make sure you roll them out, get the juices going, loosen them up a little bit. And you don't have to measure this. Um, you really just want to cover the fish with lime juice, a little bit of olive oil, um, and uh, but no measurements. I just kind of eye everything. The lime juice is going to cook the fish um, for us. So ceviche is actually cooked. Um, the, uh, the acid in the lime is going to cook the outside of the fish and make it tender for us. All right, so we've been doing ceviche in the summertime for a couple of years now. Um, it's becoming very popular and it's a really easy dish to make at home. So that's why I chose to make it today. Um, simple, makes everyone feel like a chef um, and very, uh, very easy to make. So now we're gonna start putting our stuff in our bowl to mix up. Um, a little green onion that we diced up. We have a red right onion in there as well too. And we're gonna take a uh, little cilantro and mix down it as well. All right, to finish up our ceviche marinade, we're gonna use a little bit of olive oil. Now we have lime juice in there already. This just gives it a little more kind of sauce to it. So a little olive oil. A little kosher salt, just season, and we're gonna mix it up. Just 
making sure all the fish is coated and all our ingredients are incorporated in the lime juice. We got it all mixed up into the fridge for a half hour. All right, so our ceviche has been in the fridge for about a half hour now. We're gonna cut our avocado and prep that. Um, we didn't wanna put it in with the mix to break it down and get it mushy. We kinda want some texture on it. So we start with a knife, make it really easy and move your knife along like that in a circle. Give it a little twist. Take your knife, a little bang right there and pull it out. I'm gonna grab a spoon and get the center of this out. Trying to keep it intact as much as we can so we can have some nice chunks. We're gonna keep everything around the same size when it comes to dicing, just like we did with the red onion and the, uh, and the tuna as well. So we're cutting these kind of into little squares. I cut it long ways first. And then we're gonna go back over it and make little cubes. This will give some nice creaminess to the dish um, that'll contrast the uh, red onions that we had cooked down um, for their crunch as well. All right, so we're taking our ceviche out of the fridge, put it in there for about a half hour, as you can see. The fish is becoming nice and uh, translucent. It's super tender now. Um, got the cilantro, got the chilies in there. We got the red onions that have, uh, that have cooked down in that lime juice as well. It's gonna be a really nice dish. Let's start putting it together. So this is where we're gonna mix our avocado in. And then we're gonna lightly mix it in to not break it down. Kind of fold it in. We kind of we wanna keep that avocado in big chunks and not like mashed avocado. That could happen sometimes if you move it and work it too much. All right now we're gonna present it. Make a nice mound in the middle, making sure to get all those ingredients in there. Get that avocado, those nice chilies in there. We're gonna finish it now with some really good extra virgin olive oil on top, just a little drizzle. Then we're gonna give it a little crunchy element. I have some, uh, some fried scallions here. I'm gonna sprinkle on top. A little black toasted sesame seed for color. And then we're gonna hit it with the micro cilantro on top. This way when you mix it in, you get that nice flavor. And there you go. Tuna ceviche with Thai chilies and avocado. All right, so we're gonna stay with summer dishes and seafood today. So we're doing some halibut with pistachio and arugula sauce. Um, we get a wild arugula this time of year, a little nuttiness from the pistachio. Um, and then we're gonna do it with some nice uh, thin cut vegetables too. So first things first, um, we've already cut our carrots, shredded them, but we're gonna show you how to do um, the sugar snap peas. So we're gonna take the top of them, pull that little vein off, kind of clean them a little bit. Now you can have these raw. I love having them raw in salads, um, sliced thin, or you could saute them. There's a really nice crunch to the dish. Now I like using halibut in this dish. You can incorporate a different fish, uh, but it's just nice, nice meaty texture. Um, holds together nice as well. And it goes very well with the nuttiness of the sauce. We clean the little vein off on the top. Now we're just gonna slice them thin. As thin as possible, trying to keep them kind of the same size as the carrots. But this is going to give us a nice crunchy vegetable for our fish. Now we're going to start making our sauce. I'm going to cook down some arugula, a little chicken stock, a little heavy cream. Um, some parsley for color with some cilantro and a little green onions, kind of make a nice green sauce. Um, then we're going to throw that in the blender 
with pistachios. All right, guys, I'm gonna show you how now how to make the arugula and pistachio sauce that we do for the fish. So you get your heat on high, let that warm up a little bit. I always wanna start with a hot pan. We throw in a little butter to start. Everything's always better with butter. And we cook down some shallots that we rough cut. Um, doesn't matter how you cut it, everything in this is going in a blender anyway. So it really doesn't matter on that. All right, so we're gonna turn our heat down to medium once we add our shallots. We don't wanna get color on it. We just wanna cook them. So we got just a little butter in there with our shallots. A little kosher salt for seasoning. And we're just gonna sweat these down over medium heat until they're translucent and tender. We're gonna start adding our ingredients. We start adding our wild arugula that we have grown wild this time of year in the garden. Nice bitter green. Always season that. We want a little bit of salt on that as well, some kosher salt. And then we're gonna add some more greens. We have green onions chopped up. Gonna add some cilantro. And we're gonna add some parsley for color and for taste. Cook this down for a couple of seconds. Kind of wilt it a little bit. Cooks down very fast, but we're gonna steep this with some liquid as well and really break all this down before we put it in the blender. Okay, we wilted down our arugula and shallots with our herbs. Take a little heavy cream, kind of cover it up a little bit. Like I said, do everything by eye. I really don't measure much. Um, you could always add more to the blender if you feel like your consistency is not right. I'm gonna put on medium high heat, kind of let it steep in there. Um, just wash it to make sure it doesn't boil over the pot. At this point, we're gonna add our pistachios in as well. Um, just say so start getting soft and breaking down. And we're gonna let that go for about five to 10 minutes. I'm gonna turn this down to low now and kind of just let it sit there, steep, soften off the pistachios and uh, incorporate all that flavor in there before we blend it. Okay, so once we cook this down a little bit, it starts seeing that green color and the heavy cream and it's reduced down a little. We're gonna add some chicken stock because we don't want to have it too thick. Reserve some chicken stock on the side because we're gonna use the chicken stock in the blender to get the right consistency we want. So we'll cook this down for another around, around five minutes. Um, get those pistachios really softened up. That's basically what we're doing right here. Then we're gonna throw in the Vitamix. We're gonna mix it up. We're gonna adjust our viscosity of the sauce with the chicken stock and, um, and make our, our sauce for the fish. I'll see you guys on the other side over by the blender. All right, so we moved our sauce mix off the stove. We're gonna put it in the Vitamix right now and adjust the uh, thickness with um, some chicken stock. Now you really should be using the Vitamix for this just because of the speed that it goes. Um, you really wanna get a puree and everything very smooth. Now it's okay, it's gonna be a little thick. We're gonna keep adjusting it with this, with some chicken stock to get it more liquefied. Now the reason I did that is because you could always add liquid to it. You can't really take away. If you get it too watery, you're gonna have to add more arugula, more pistachios, you're gonna have to add more ingredients. Um, this way, you're, uh, you're really controlling the way that you want it. All right, so our consistency is perfect. I'm gonna pour it back into the pot. All right, sauce is done. We're gonna go back over to the stove. We're gonna start cooking up our vegetables and our fish. So now we're gonna do our rice. We cooked our rice ahead of time and cooled it off. By doing that, we can get it crispy again because once you stop cooking rice for the first time, it's not gonna overcook again. 
It's gonna stay at that consistency. So we're gonna add a little bit of olive oil to the pot. And we're gonna take our basmati rice. I like using basmati, it's nice and fluffy. Um, gets a nice crisp on it. Super hot pan. And we're gonna put some of this rice in there. All right, so we're gonna get our rice in the pot, break it up a little bit, give it a couple of flips, and then we're gonna spread it out on the bottom of the pan. We want a lot of surface area. We want the rice to kind of fry and crisp up on the bottom. So once we flatten that out, we're gonna sit and leave it for a couple minutes. Okay, so it's been a few minutes. We're getting some color on our rice start on the sides. So we're gonna move it now. So flipping it up. And you'll notice the rice started to stick together with that color on it. We just want more of that. As much of that as we can get to give as much texture and dishes as possible. So we're gonna flatten it down again. And wait another couple minutes to do the same thing. All right, so we're coming back to our basmati rice. We're ready to get it crisp up a little bit. We're gonna toss it now and see how we get that real color on there. That's what we want. Um, now we're gonna work on, start working on our fish, and then do our vegetables, put it all together. So we're moving on to our halibut now. We have a smoking hot pan right here. We're gonna take a paper towel first, pat down our fish. We wanna get all the moisture off the top of it. And then we're gonna season it with some salt. I'm gonna hit the pan with a little bit of olive oil. Now I'm using a non-stick pan. A lot easier to use when you're doing fish to get the perfect sear on it. And you really don't have to use as much olive oil as well to cook. So we're gonna wait till this is starting to smoke a little bit. Then we're gonna add our fish. So we're gonna take our fish we're gonna put it away from us in the pan so it doesn't splatter on us. And we are not gonna move it at all. Leave it right there, get a nice sear on it. Now we're searing our fish today to give it a little more texture. Um, this dish is all about texture with the rice and the fish. Um, this way we get a nice sear on top, a little crispy top. Inside is gonna be super tender and moist. super easy fish to cook, very forgiving, um, will not break apart as easy when you're lifting it out of the pan or when you're flipping it. Um, it's a lot easier to use uh, than a lot of thinner fish for a dish like this. So we're gonna sear our fish for around five, six minutes on one side, flip it, and we're gonna put it in our preheated oven. We put our oven to 400 to try and get some crisp around the edges as well. All right, so I'm ready to flip. So we cooked our halibut on one side. We had some really nice color on there, a really nice texture. We're gonna pop it in a 400 degree oven for around another five to six minutes until it's finished cooking. All right, so we're gonna finish our dish up with our vegetables. We're gonna get a little olive oil. And we're gonna add a little butter too. Give it a little more flavor. Everything is better with butter. Take our shredded carrots and our cut snow peas. Season with a little salt. I'm gonna cook these down for around two, three minutes, really get some nice color on them, but keep them crisp as well. All right, so it's been around five minutes. We're gonna take our fish out. It's looking beautiful. I'm gonna check to see if it's done by feeling the sides. If it gives a little bit, give it a little more time, but this is nice and firm, which means it's ready to go. I'm gonna start our plating now. 
going to take our pistachio and arugula sauce. Get a nice big spoon. Start at one side, pull it to the other. Take some crispy rice. I'm going to put it down at the bottom of that. You can hear the rice hit the plate, nice and crispy. Two of our vegetables for color. Give it a nice little spin as we plate it. Give it a nice little mound right there. All right, now we're gonna finish with our fish. Right on top. All right, we're gonna finish it with a little micro cilantro on top and a little bit of extra virgin olive oil on top right there. And there we go. Halibut with crispy rice, vegetables, and arugula and pistachio sauce. Thank you for tuning in to our summer seafood episode. Where we made a simple tuna ceviche, as well as halibut, with pistachio and arugula sauce and crispy rice. Follow me on Instagram at chefdan1 or check out the website chefdan.com. Until next time, thanks for hanging out with me in the kitchen. <laughs>